We all witnessed New Glen launch for the first time, which turned out to be better than many expected. But there was a problem during the booster landing, leaving us unsure about what exactly went wrong. Now, new reports have surfaced shedding light on the issue. Meanwhile, SpaceX is already gearing up for its next Starship launch, scheduled for a very soon date. In today's video, we'll discuss what happened with New Glenn's landing failure and share the details about SpaceX's upcoming Starship launch. Before we dive in, please subscribe to our channel to stay updated on Starship and SpaceX's other groundbreaking achievements. Blue Origin's New Glenn rocket has finally made its first flight after years of delays. However, the mission didn't go completely as planned, as the booster failed to achieve a successful landing. The launch happened in the early hours of January 16, 2025, and saw the seven BE-4 engines power New Glenn's first stage, lifting the rocket into space. The second stage and payload were successfully delivered into orbit, marking a major achievement for Blue Origin. Despite the success of reaching orbit, the mission faced a major setback when the new Glenn booster failed to land on the recovery ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. The booster's engines reignited as planned during its descent to slow it down. But something went wrong during the final moments and the booster was ultimately lost. And the live stream of the landing was cut off during the descent, leaving many questions unanswered. The unsuccessful attempt has drawn comparisons to SpaceX's Falcon booster landings, sparking debate about Blue Origin's approach to reusability. Many observers noted the similarities between Blue Origin's booster recovery attempt and SpaceX's well-established Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy recovery methods. Both companies use autonomous ships to recover their boosters at sea. SpaceX currently operates three drone ships. Of course, I still love you, just read the instructions and a shortfall of gravitas. These ships are stationed strategically in the ocean to catch boosters returning from various missions. SpaceX's boosters perform precise burns to slow their descent and use grid fins for steering during re-entry. Just before landing, they deploy landing legs and perform a final burn to softly touch down on the drone ship. SpaceX's drone ship landings, while initially challenging, have become a routine part of their operations. In contrast, Blue Origin's new Glenn booster was attempting a similar recovery method, but failed to replicate SpaceX's success. Based on preliminary data, the failure during New Glenn's first booster landing attempt seems to have been caused by issues during the entry burn phase. Observers noticed that the entry burn, which is critical for slowing the booster as it re-enters the atmosphere, lasted about 15 seconds less than planned. This shortened burn time indicates that the engines were not operating at full capacity, likely due to an imbalance in the fuel and oxidizer mix. Specifically, the engine plume suggested a fuel-rich combustion state, where more fuel was burned than oxygen. This is a significant deviation from the intended oxygen-rich mix required for the BE-4 engines to perform optimally. The issue seems to have originated from the supply of liquid oxygen to the engines. For the engines to produce the necessary thrust, they need a precise mixture of fuel and oxidizer. During the aggressive flip maneuver that the booster performs to orient itself for the entry burn, the rapid change in direction may have caused the liquid oxygen and fuel to slosh within their respective tanks. Sloshing occurs when the liquid propellant moves erratically due to the booster's sudden change in orientation, creating bubbles or gaps in the flow of liquid to the engine. In the case of New Glenn, the design of the booster, which places the liquid oxygen tank at the bottom and the methane tank above it may have exacerbated the problem. During the flip maneuver, the propellant could have shifted unevenly, temporarily disrupting the flow of liquid oxygen to the turbo pumps. Turbo pumps are high-speed pumps that feed liquid propellant from the tanks into the combustion chamber at extremely high pressure. If the supply of liquid oxygen was interrupted, even briefly, the turbo pumps may have ingested vapor instead of liquid, causing a condition where vapor bubbles form in the pump, reducing its efficiency and potentially leading to damage. This disruption could have created a cascade of issues. Without the proper amount of liquid oxygen, the engines would have been unable to generate the required thrust, causing the burn to end prematurely. 
The shortened burn would, in turn, reduce the booster's deceleration, leaving it traveling too fast to successfully land. Additionally, the imbalance in the propellant mixture could have caused uneven thrust across the engines, making it harder for the booster to maintain stability during descent. Another potential contributing factor could be related to the design of the BE-4 engines themselves. These engines are designed to operate with an oxygen-rich staged combustion cycle, which is highly efficient but also complex. Any disruptions in the precise balance of fuel and oxygen can have a significant impact on performance. Observers noted that the engine plumes during the entry burn phase exhibited characteristics of a combustion anomaly, such as an unusual color and shape. Meanwhile, SpaceX is preparing for its next Starship launch, which is expected to happen in February 2025. The company is working hard to improve on the issues found during Flight 7 and make sure Flight 8 is even more successful. Flight 7 showed some progress but also highlighted several problems. One major issue was with the heat shield during re-entry. Parts of the heat shield wore down, and some tiles came loose, making it harder for the spacecraft to handle the intense heat when coming back to Earth. To fix this for Flight 8, SpaceX has improved the heat tiles by using stronger materials and better adhesives to keep them in place. There were also problems with the payload dispenser, which releases cargo during the mission. During Flight 7, the dispenser didn't work as smoothly as expected, causing some issues with deploying the payload. For Flight 8, SpaceX has redesigned the dispenser to make it more reliable and has run several tests to ensure it works properly. Another problem occurred in the aft section of the spacecraft, where there was an oxygen leak and a small fire. These issues raised concerns about the vehicle's safety. For Flight 8, SpaceX has upgraded the seals in the aft section and added better monitoring systems to quickly detect and handle leaks or other issues. Booster 15, the rocket that will be used for Flight 8, includes these improvements. SpaceX is already making progress in getting ready for Flight 8. Ship 34 and Booster 15 have completed cryogenic testing, which checks how the hardware performs in extremely cold conditions similar to space. On January 15th, Ship 34 was moved to the Massey test site, where it successfully completed cryogenic testing by January 17th. It is expected to return to the production site soon for engine installation, a process involving the installation of six Raptor engines. Once this step is completed, Ship 34 will undergo static fire testing to validate its readiness for launch. Simultaneously, B-15, which completed cryogenic testing in December, is nearing readiness. This booster is equipped with 33 Raptor engines, reflecting SpaceX's ongoing efforts to optimize power output and reliability. Recent road closures and observed movements suggest that B-15 will soon be transported to the pad for further testing, likely including a full-duration static fire test to simulate launch conditions. That's all for today's video. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again in the next one.